blaspheming the Holy Ghost? I don't know, but I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Not for a second. Any altered states of consciousness, animal manifestations, animal manifestations, people barking and howling and making sounds of animals coming. What? Those are beasts. I'm telling you, spirits manifest themselves. And you just take a look at what the person's doing. And then you understand the spirit that's manifesting in them. And the Bible calls it revelings. And it's given you evidence that it's not the Holy Spirit of God. It is the spirit that now worketh in the children of, the dis of disobedience, works of the flesh. Let's look at what the Bible, how the Bible talks about Babylon. Revelation 17, 1, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So, so he can, you know what? Let me stop right here. Most people know that uh, if you um, if you like committing adultery or you want to you're kind of at a place and you want to talk a woman into coming home with you, give her some wine. Okay, give her some wine. Get her loosened up. She'll be a whole lot more into the deal. I mean, that's just how it works. People they drink. They don't make the right choices. They run around on their wives or their husbands because of it. So it's the wine of her fornication. And so he carried me away into the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names, a blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So here we have the beast who brings in this drunken spirit. Revelation 17:4. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery, Bab I want you to think about that. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She's called mystery because mystery has to do with not knowing. When you're drunk, you don't know. There is a, there's a YouTube video of a pastor's wife at the... Pensacola outpouring who cannot remember she's so drunk in the spirit she cannot remember where she's from she has to ask her husband honey where are we from I think we've used that in one of our videos uh, the Holy Bible sure what a prophecy um, Paul Creek Ministries has uh, the I think the original there and they've got it in one of their videos and I'm telling you that's a spirit of drunkenness and it's a mystery you can't drunk people they don't know who they are they don't know where they live they can't drive an automobile. We don't let people who are drunk drive an automobile. Why? They're dangerous. We shouldn't let preachers be drunk behind the pulpit either. They're dangerous. They're going to kill people is what they're going to do. Literally, they're going to slay them. They're going to murder them in the spirit. Stay away from this stuff. But that spirit, in, instead of the Holy Spirit coming on you, giving you illumination as to what the Word of God means and what it says and how to, how to interpret it and how to read it and how to understand it, know who the real Jesus is and the, know all the doctrines of the faith, this spirit is a mystery spirit. When you're, It gives you a drunken spirit and now you don't know, but you don't care. That's the thing. And so you, you start hearing all these people talking about, oh, we don't get into doctrine. We get into the spirit. You know what it is? They're drunk, they don't know, and they don't care. And that's how they want you to be. Oh, don't, don't come at me with doctrine. Come to me with the Spirit. Oh, it's a good feeling. They don't know, and they don't care. That's what they want for you. Revelation 17, 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery. See, stop right here. When the Holy Spirit, the real Spirit of God, is on you, you understand the mystery. It's not a mystery anymore. And how, do, how is this mystery revealed to us? Did we go, oh, I'm getting a revelation. Oh, God's downloading it into me right now. We, we just we read it out of, the, out of the Bible. 
That's how we know the mystery. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Now, here's something that's real interesting. With Christ, the real Jesus, the Spirit brings us to Christ. That's what we saw in John 16. He will speak of me. The Spirit brings us to Christ. With the other Jesus, the other Jesus, the Antichrist, the devil, brings the Spirit to you. It's the opposite. It's the other way around. The exact opposite. So let's ask the question, what, what is the purpose of this other spirit? Why, why is God using, why, is, why does God pour out the, the mystery of Babylon, the spirit of drunkenness to the entire world? Why is it that, there's, there church, that there are churches that are involved in these extramarital affairs against God? Why are there churches that have these manifestations of drunkenness and revelings and false doctrine and things like that? What, what is her purpose? How does she work? Well, we studied from the scriptures that the real spirit will convict us of sin. It will draw us to Jesus. It will show us things to come and, and show us things out of the word. Mystery Babylon, and she is seen in several places in the scriptures. She's always a, um, always a female, a female character in the Bible. Think of, think of female characters in the Bible that you think would qualify as Mystery Babylon. You're probably right. But what is her role? What is her job? What is it that she's supposed to do? Let's look at the scriptures. Number one, Genesis 39, 7. We find out that she is a seducer. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lascivious. First one. It's the first one. This was Potiphar's wife. She was married to Potiphar. Potiphar trusted Joseph so much that he hardly ever came home. So he's gone out doing business, doing politics or whatever it is. Joseph's running his whole household. And there's his wife. There's Potiphar's wife all alone. And she's looking at this young, handsome Joseph. She probably, you know, she probably got a wine glass in one hand, cigarette in the other. She goes up to Joseph, lie with me. She's a seducer. What does the Bible say? Seducing spirits. Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The way of the wicked. The wicked is the Antichrist. His spirit is a seducing spirit. Ezekiel thirteen ten. Because even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace and one built up a wall and others daubed it with untempered mortar think of a wall that falls Jericho okay see that's that's your type that's your story that's your picture here we have wicked a wicked spirit will seduce people here we have the prophets seducing people oh come on over we have better music in our church we turn the lights down we have coffee and donuts you can have all this stuff and by the way we're going to talk about sex on Sunday they're seducing people into their churches it's another spirit Mark 13 22 for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible even the elect 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Here he's, now he's connected it. Why are they seducing you? To teach you different doctrine. What's doctrine? The gospel. They're going to seduce you into believing another gospel. And just remember and we talked about this last week. The whore She'll tell you whatever you want to hear. She will. She'll tell you whatever you want to hear. You pay the money. You get seduced. You find out that her steps lead to hell. And you fell for it. Second Timothy 3.13 But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving, being deceived. 1 John 2.26 these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. 
You know what the antidote is to a seducing spirit? These things that are written. That's, that's how you get inoculated against a seducing spirit. That's, that's how when you start hearing these false doctrines... And you, somebody on Facebook said, "Oh, you got to, you got to, I got to show you this. This got watch this video. Go see this. Oh, I'm following this, and oh, this is so great." And you learn the Bible, and you watch that, and then you write back, um, "That's unbiblical. That's wrong." Well, you're judging. And you know how the people on Facebook, you're judging me. How come you blah blah blah? And then you got to unfriend somebody, or you got to block them, because they're going to come at you, brother or sister. They're going to tear you apart. Why? Because these things are written so that people won't seduce you into believing false doctrine. And you read the Bible. And then some guy's got some new teaching says, Oh, you gotta you gotta be slain in the spirit. Oh, you gotta have this. Oh, you gotta go back and keep the Torah. You gotta keep all the law and you gotta do the Passover cedar, which is not biblical. You most of the most of the activities I I kinda did my homework. Everybody said, Well, you gotta keep the Passover. We had a Passover cedar at our church. I looked at the rituals involved in the Jewish Passover Cedar. Most of them don't come out of the Bible. Why should I do that? Where did they come from? I'm not doing that. I don't know where it came from. But these people are trying to seduce you into telling you that you're going to lose your salvation if you don't follow their direction and fall under their command. They're trying to seduce you. The inoculation to a seducing spirit is the written text to the Word of God. It's that simple. These things have I written to you concerning them that seduce you. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee Because thou sufferest that woman Oh there she is Look at there He even gives her a name Jezebel The word Baal is in that name Bel, Which calleth herself a prophetess To teach And to seduce My servants To commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Whew. Jezebel, number one, she calleth herself. She's self-appointed. God didn't call her. Number two, she seduces my servants to commit fornication. Come on in, big fellas. I'll show you a good time in the spirit. And to eat things sacrificed unto the idols. That is, I, I believe, and I, I can't, Say it 100% yet. Eating things sacrificed in the idols, I think it has everything to do with receiving the mark in the right hand or forehead. I can't prove it, so whatever. Just forget I said it. But I think that's where it's leading to. Those, that's one of the four things that the Jerusalem Council told the Gentile church not to do. But here we have this seductive spirit, to seduce my spirits to commit fornication. I'm going to put this up on the screen. I hate doing this, but this is what it looks like. All these sermon series, stripped, red hot, whatever. New Victoria's Secrets, the intimacy series. That's sick. That's, that's absolutely sick. Ed Young Jr., several years ago, put a bed up on the stage and said, sex is worship. That's, that's ridiculous. He then, uh, last year, gets up on, on this bed, him and his wife, on the roof of their church, TV cameras everywhere for 24 hours, they're laying in bed together, which that's that's awful then tells everybody he's got a new sermon series he's going to teach them how to put more romance in the relationship and and do this seven times one day a week in a different place in the house it's lasciviousness and it's ritualism too it's ritualism tantric magic that he's that he's seducing people into falling for you you want to have a better marriage number one read this bible Find out your role in the marriage from God. Number two, ask God to bless your marriage according to what's in the Bible. You'll, ha you'll have an absolutely outstanding marriage. God will bless you all the way around. You don't need this junk. It's seducing people. It's another spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. So you have to ask yourself the question, the preachers who put this stuff on, what spirit are they being led by? And if it's not the Holy Spirit, 